And I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready to receive a miracle today? Yes, I am. Praise God. All right, say this with me. Say, Father, I demand today and I receive my daily bread. It's mine and you are faithful to give it to me. So I receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now let's pray and go into today's broadcast. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this honor to bring forth your truth. We are trusting the Spirit of God to help and guide us into every truth today. And Lord, I declare right now every body is lifted from everyone watching and listening to me right now. And every yoke is destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Wisdom comes freely from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, turn your Bibles. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I said I'm sharing with you this week on uh, walking in spiritual, financial intelligence. Now, why is this so important? You see, because I found out that everything about our lives somehow revolves around finances. Everything. Everything. Now that's why the world people say money answers all things. That's why they think that way. That's not God's thought. You know, God didn't say that. God never said money answers all things. What's in the Bible? Yes, in the Bible doesn't mean God said it. Praise God. Actually, it was a reprimand that God was reprimanding the, 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 the state officials in that day that instead of doing what they are supposed to do, they spend their time enjoying themselves and then they just say, look, money will answer for it. After all, money answers everything. So we use taxpayers' money to solve it. Praise God. That, that, so God was reprimanding them. So they said, the Bible says money answers it all things. No. No, it's a thought, but it's not God's thought. Praise God. Because the truth is money. There are many things money cannot answer. But then also, a lot of things revolves around money. A lot of things revolves around finances. So if you don't know how to intelligently, there are people who have lost their spirituality because of finances. There are people who, who have stopped working with God because they got challenged where finances is concerned. Yeah, lots of people that way. You know, many times, you know, someone is very spiritual, depths, but then a lack of finances make everyone go, hmm, what's use, of what use is this your anointing? See, like the late Archbishop Benson Dowser said, anointing without money is annoyance. Now, you don't have to have all the money in the world before you have before you know that you're serving god no no praise god you see but you get to that point where god you are confident now because of your testimonies and track record you are confident to dwell in God, knowing and understanding that He takes care of all your needs. Now, now I'm going to be sharing some truths with you that um, you you would have to take time to meditate on them, and then allow the Spirit of God to begin to minister to your heart where these things are concerned. If not, it will not benefit you. Now we're reading First Corinthians chapter two. And verse 12, I'll read it again. We read that yesterday. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Then it says, Which things also we speak, not in the words, or I put it this way, not in the intelligence which man's wisdom teaches, 
but in the intelligence the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit teaches and we compare spiritual things with spiritual now like I said a lot of I see a lot of people having financial difficulties you know meeting their bills you know, taking care of issues. You want to, don't want to think about how many families that have been, you know, broken because of issues surrounding finances. You know, things got really tough and people are put into harm's way by the kind of temptation that they get exposed to because of trying to get money. See, so I'm talking about believers. Now I'm not talking about unbelievers. Unbelievers, they, they lack restraint. So, Anything that comes to their mind, they can do. But I'm talking about believers. I'm talking to you as a child of God. You know, there are many times you have subjected yourself to certain temptations because of money, because of finances, because you need to pay bills, you need to pay your rent, you need to pay. So, okay, you know, people have asked those questions. Look, Pastor, I, I love God, you know. I, I love to serve God. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have a good job. And things are really tough. Things are really tight for me. Okay. Understandably. Understandably so. So, you are wondering, what do I do? You know, so you find... Now, you, you, you also see pastors, sincere and honest men of God. Sincere and honest believers. Or people called into ministry. And then they begin to tell you this, that look, you cannot... Um, you cannot sustain yourself as a minister by doing ministry alone. You have to look for something else to do. And then they qualify these thoughts by saying, now, if I ruffle any feathers, the intention is not to ruffle any feathers. We are ju I'm just speaking truth to you. And it's, it's, you see, it's for you to open your heart and receive the truth of God. And then the Holy Spirit will now open it up to you. But if you're locked up and say, no, I don't believe in what you're saying. Okay, like I said, I'm sharing my own testimony. I'm sharing my own walk with God. See, if you are not experiencing the same work with God, you just ask the simple question, is this work right? Is this sweet? Is this, is this what I desire? Now, if it's something you desire, you're not working in it yet, don't fight it. Rather, go back inside and say, Holy Spirit, what, what this pastor is sharing, come talk to me about it. That's what I do. See, that's what I do. When I see someone function in something I've never understood, I can't speak against it. I want to like, okay, Lord, Please talk to me about that. Praise God. So, so you find you find people who say you can't, you know, you can do ministry alone. You know, you have to um, do something else or get involved in one business or the other. And and uh, and then they tell you even Apostle Paul was a tent maker, and so he was not only preaching the gospel. In the time he's not preaching the gospel, he's busy making tent. But you know, you see, that's such a funny, um, funny idea that people allow to settle in their minds because when you bring it into the practicality of things, you know, it's very impossible. Now, Paul mentioned that he was a tent maker, not to tell you that he was doing the business of making tent. He mentioned that he was a tent maker because he used that as an opportunity to reach out to a certain people who were involved with tent making. See, I studied engineering in school, so I get into an area where people are you know talking construction or and then i've got some intelligence or i've got some um stuff up there you know concerning that so i, I get around there you know, i start talking to them in that light you know and, and we are talking structures we're talking stuff and then someone you know comes around and say ah you know you know pastor george does engineering work too you know so you see that's exactly what happened paul was just saying as a tent maker i was able to communicate with these people and someone picked it up they say paul was a tent maker okay what about peter what was peter peter was a fisherman oh goody now let's look at peter's life the first encounter Jesus met Peter, you know, at the boats. You know, that was not the first time 
they were meeting, obviously. But but at the boat, and Jesus preached with this boat and said, Oh, go launch out and let's have a catch. They saw the kind of fish they have never seen before. What did Jesus say to him? He said, Leave those fishes, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Oh, maybe that was just that moment. You know, afterwards, Peter went back to his fishing. So when he's not following Jesus, he's going to fish. That's what you may think. All right. So Jesus died, rose from the dead. And while the disciples were wondering, okay, so what next? Peter woke up one day and said, I'm going to fish. And Jesus met them. You remember the story, John chapter 21. And Jesus met them there and says, hey, children, do you have any meat? He said, well, no. We thought all night we caught nothing. He said, cast your net on the right side. And then they did. And they caught lots of fishes and John recognized Jesus. And he said to Peter, hey, it's the Lord who the Lord has shown up, okay? And you know the story, and Jesus looked at Peter and says, Peter, do you love me more than this? What a question. And he said, yes, I do. He said, feed my sheep. Now, Jesus came at a time when Peter says, I'm going back to fishing. Now, there is no account that Peter said, I'm abandoning following Jesus. I'm going back to fishing. But Jesus came and called him out again from that fishing. And there is no record that Peter went back to his fishing business. Now, that doesn't mean that Peter um, will not have an opportunity to interact with fishermen and bring forth ideas. Or that doesn't even mean once in a while, Peter will not just say, oh, um, let's let's throw your nets there, you know, unless you know you understand what I'm saying. But you see, he was not doing the business of fishing because this is the truth. And if you're if you're in such ideology, you will truly know that you cannot combine your faith work. I'm talking about those who are called into full-time ministry. You cannot combine it with running a business. There is no way you can combine the two. You can't. You will either be running the business or be doing faith work with the Lord. Both of them can never mix. So when you see a pastor doing that and you think he's succeeding, I can tell you the truth. He is not truly living the faith life. Because when you get in there, it begins to choke what is on the other side. That's the truth, praise God. Jesus said it. You cannot serve God and mammon. You either love one, you either love God and despise mammon, or you love mammon and despise God. That's just how it is. Now, let me tell you this also. I'm setting the foundation so you understand when we start and start talking these things, you will understand. Now also, there is this possibility that as you walk with God in the ministry and, and you do things that God has called you to do, that's your focus. Now, it is possible that things will come out of you that will generate finances. Understand that? Yeah. Things will come out of you that will generate finances. But the, it, you didn't start out. That's the mistake people make. So they look at somebody and say, oh, this man is a great man. Oh God. He still works by faith, but then he has this business. You, you don't go ask the question, how did that business come about? And two, who's running the business? You see, naturally when you walk with God and God begins to make you great, there are things that will drop off from you that will become channels of finances for you or for someone that, there are there are people who, who who generate income i mean ministers god loving ministers faith ministers who generate income not necessarily for themselves so you see things working and but you don't understand that those things came as a result of their work with god now there are those who have misinterpreted those things and think that, oh, God brought this thing for me now. So they focus on it. You will still get into that place of pleasing God or pleasing mammon. See? But if you keep your focus, there are natural things that will just drop off from you. And God will raise up, you know, naturally to just keep flowing. So get the point. Don't misinterpret what I'm trying to explain to you. But now I'm talking to you as a staffer. You as a, you, you, you want to walk this thing out. Okay, how do I walk? How do I deal with this financial situation? Praise God. Yeah. 
That's what we're going to be talking about. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, we'll go into it tomorrow because because I'm, I'm I, I hope you understand this foundation that I'm trying to set now. So tomorrow we'll go into straight on and start dealing with these things. Father, we honor you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for opening our hearts and our minds. We love you, Lord, and that's why we are here listening and, and, and looking into your word. Thank you for an understanding heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Have the best day ever today because God is about to change your life. See you tomorrow. Bye.